Welcome to OpenBXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Before and throughout the pandemic, community boards have helped amplify the concerns and voices of local communities. Bronx Community Board 6 encompasses the neighborhoods of Bathgate, Belmont, East Tremont, and West Farms. Joining us now to share more is John Sanchez. He is the district manager at Bronx Community Board 6 and also a candidate for city council in District 15. Welcome, John. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me today, Sanji. Of course. And for those viewers who are not familiar, can you tell us a little bit about Bo Community Board 6, what a community board is, and about the neighborhoods that you serve? Yeah, well, Community Board 6, we're the most local level of government, and we represent um, Arthur Avenue, East Tremont, and West Farms. And we're the kind of, we're the first line of defense when it comes to issues that you have with the city, whether it be someone having an issue with traffic, or the parks not being cleaned up, or sanitation, or just looking for employment or a job, we're the first line of defense and we're a city agency meant to help the community. And your work hasn't stopped through COVID-19, right? Um, from my understanding, all the community board members are volunteers as well? Yes, that's correct. There are volunteers appointed by the borough president, but our work has not stopped despite the pandemic. Uh, we've been doing all of our meetings remotely, but we've still been serving the community through food giveaways. We even raised $1,000 to give away grocery gift cards. And we're continuing to do our monthly civics workshops to let the community know about the importance of voting and the census. Right, that's wonderful. Um, John, can you share the impact that budget cuts have had on the community boards and how um, Community Board 6 in particular has continued despite the lack of funding? Yes, well, the budget cuts have impacted all city agencies. As many people in the Bronx can see, you see that the parks aren't being maintained as much as they should be. That's because there were severe $100 million budget cuts. Even our community board, we had a budget cut of $9,000, which is about 5% of our budget. But this is how we approached it. We planned ahead. So we bought supplies last fiscal year for the next two years. So we stocked up on supplies. And um, unfortunately, we have a year-round paid internship program. Usually we have four to five interns. We've had to reduce that to two interns this semester. But we're still pushing forward and we still have two Bronx residents that are interning at our office. Thanks for sharing, John. Um, as we know, Richie Torres just became the congressman for District 15, opening up the seat for city council in District 15. As a candidate for this seat, which main issues will you prioritize, and how has your work as a district manager in Community Board 6 prepared you for this role? Well, the top issue is going to be unemployment. We were facing 16% unemployment pre-pandemic. Now we're looking at nearly a 30% unemployment rate. So that's gonna to be top of line. And each city council member gets money that they can distribute to the community. I wanna invest the money that I get into job and workforce development. So people without college degrees can still get jobs that pay a living wage. And my, my, job, my role at the community board prepares me perfectly because I had to do a lot with a little. And at the city council, if I have even more resources, I'm able to do innovative ideas. So for example, having open gym nights throughout the community that I did at the community board, I could do that as a city council member. Being, having bold initiatives is what we need at the next city council and having a community board that's different than the rest is what prepares me for that job. And let's prepare our viewers for upcoming elections, right, John? There's not, yes. the, um, you know, uh, the presidential election, but we have local elections to worry about as well. As we just mentioned, city council seats are being filled um, and vacated. Um, so can we just discuss the importance on voting local this upcoming election as well? 100%. We have the election in November, but June of 2021 and March in my situation we're gonna re be able to redefine the future of New York City for the next 10 years. 35 new council members are going to be elected, new borough presidents, new mayor. And I always tell people, if you want an after school program in your neighborhood, the president isn't going to be the one to do that. It's gonna be your local city council member who can impact your day-to-day -day life and what you see when you're walking through your neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to learn also about your monthly Bronx resume and internship workshops. Are they still going on remotely and can people still join? Yes, 100%. Um, we created a partnership with Fordham University's Office of Career Services and a bunch of students from the Manresa, pro from the Manresa program. And what we're going to do is monthly um, resume and interview workshops. One week is going to be a general overview on how to get a resume, how to get an interview. 
But then the following week, we do one-on-one individualized, individualized attention where you can get hands-on help with your resume and do mock interviews. And we're going to do that every month from now through the end of the year. And we're always going to do them the second and third week of the month. And people can still sign up. How can people sign up, John? Yes, they can email us at bronxcb6 at bronxcb6.org. And we're also on Instagram at bronxcb6. So we definitely want people to reach out to us and get some help. John, how did you get involved in the community board? How did that come to fruition for you? Yeah, well, I I didn't know a community board existed when I was in college. And um, I found out about the role afterwards. I was working for an elected official and I started to go to all of these meetings and I was realizing there's so much of a wealth of information that you learn from a community board. I tell people, you learn more about your neighborhood going to one community board meeting than walking through your neighborhood for three months. That's how much information is there. And, um, you know, my experience in government helped and I interviewed and I've had the job for four years and it's been a great experience. Right. And for those who are curious, um, let's discuss the importance of civic engagement, right? Why should people consider joining their local community boards and how does CB6 help people join um, their, their community board as well? Yeah, so it's, it's vital that people participate in the community boards. One, so you can know what new development, housing development is coming into your neighborhood. Two, you can also hear monthly reports from your elected officials and what they're planning in the community. And the way we try to recruit people to come to our meetings is we have all our meetings remotely, but we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, and we're constantly updating them so we can get people involved. And we have an active email list, more than 1,200 people, and we email them consistently. And we have to reach people where they are. We also do events out in the community to spread the word. Um, John, can we also discuss housing in your, in your area? Um, yes. How is that going now? I know that land use is a big thing that you discuss in community board yes. meetings at Community Board 6. Can you just give us an update on that? Yeah, so there's still several developments coming up in the neighborhood. And I think the biggest issue a lot of people have is that they feel like the housing that they, um, that the housing that's being proposed isn't affordable for them. Um, but I think one reason for that is because the city has some weird outdated rules that prevent housing from being built in certain parts of the neighborhood. So as a result, it limits what's available in the neighborhood and it jacks the price up for available rents. Um, There's one idea which a lot of homeowners um, support is that if you're a homeowner and you want to have a basement apartment and you want to bring it up to code, um, the city potentially could give you uh, subsidies so you can have an extra like a basement apartment so that way you could provide someone a new home, but you could also get some rental income. And should um, people that live in that district be worried about, you know, things such as gentrification, displacement, um, things of that nature when it comes to um, developments that are still going on during um, COVID-19? Fortunately, the developments in our neighborhood in Board 6, we don't have luxury condos coming into our part of the neighborhood. Uh, We're a 20-minute walk from the train in either direction, so a lot of those threats of gentrification, um, they're not as pressing as if we were all the way in the South Bronx near Manhattan. Um, But I think top of mind for everyone with the pandemic is there was an eviction moratorium. But the big fear people have, if we don't get aid from Congress, is what happens when the new year comes and you have to pay four or five months of back rent. People aren't going to be able to do that. And that's a big concern. And we're hoping that Congress acts so we can um, address that. Absolutely. Um, John, just about any upcoming events, meetings that the public can join virtually, and how can people stay in touch with you? Yeah, so Community Board 6, we try to be one of the most active community boards in the city. So we're going to continue our civics workshops. Um, That's going to be every month. Um, We're even trying to do um, open gym events if it's safe for a limited amount of students so we can have volleyball for young people to express themselves because they're going to school remotely. Best way to keep in touch with us, email bronxcb6 at bronxcb6.org and our Instagram, bronxcb6. Thank you so much, John Sanchez, District Manager at Bronx Community Board 6 for joining us today and for giving us these updates. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back.